And you know what? Can you give us an example? What is, they are political prisoners, as far as I'm concerned. What are they going through right now? Because you may come in contact with them, or you might not be privileged to say that. I don't know. No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm going to take it. But I shake my head because it's sad. It's sad what they're going through right now. You know, Jeff Ford and Mr. Who was locked up in the most secure prison in the United States, man. What's the and name? when I'm saying that, I'm saying that they don't have no physical contact at all, not even with guards. For 23 hours a day, they in a cell, and they dealing with concrete and steel. You know, I, I, and I, some of us have been locked up before, and some of us have been in SEG before. When you're in SEG six months, it'll mess with your mentals. When you you in SEG, did, did you hear what I said? When you in SEG six months and they getting ready to put you in C grade and take away your commissary and maybe knock off a couple of good time days, that messes with your mental. And that's just six months. We're talking about men that's been locked up in this fashion for 20, 30, 40 years. That's inhumane. I mean, I, I mean, you know what? It's, 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 it's mind boggling to me. And what I would like to know, I remember when Larry Hoover and Jeff Ford was out there, young children that are being gunned down in the streets. And there used to be a code of ethics. If y'all gunned down these children, you will be taken care of. Was that not a code of ethics? Once upon a time. That, that was the code. If you remember, uh, because I know you're from Chicago, you remember the one young brother that was shot in the Cabrini Greens. Uh, and that was an example of, of of what happens, you know, where the brothers decided, hey, listen, you either turn yourself in to the police or we're gonna take you down to the police and turn you in because that's something that we don't do. You don't mess with women, you don't mess with children. My brother Gator calls it the code. You understand me? And 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 it should be followed. That's something that you that 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 it has to be followed. But in order for any code or any matter of discipline to be followed, you have to have a structure to enforce that matter and enforce that discipline. And that's what we're lacking because they don't want to see that strong black leadership. So we can't build the structure that we need to be able to control the brothers and sisters in our community that have gone astray. Yeah. Can you communicate to the people that are saying right now, why let them out? Because I would like to know from you, there's a certain segment of the population that pre the preacher cannot talk to, the imam cannot talk to, the rabbi cannot talk to, the, 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 the pastor can't talk to, but they can communicate with them in a language that they understand. But if I'm wrong, let me know. Well, I don't think you're wrong, but if you look in the churches, and this is not to knock any Christian brothers or, or, or in any of those that, that, that follow the Bible, but the churches, as far as the young brothers, the young strong soldiers that are out in the streets, they miss it. They're not in the churches. They, they, they're, not in, they're not in the imams, and, and they, I mean, in the masjids, and, and they're, not, they're not following, you know, the way that traditionally uh, religion was followed, traditionally. And I'm not talking, you know, you might have one or two in there that are, you know, that have a, a background of, of, of running the streets and being, you know, a street soldier. But I'm talking about the masses of them. They're not following the traditional religions. And that is simply because, you know, the, the youth, and I don't want to get into it uh, too deep, but the youth are looking for something different that, 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 you know, the generation ahead of them did not pursue. You know, and, and that goes into a, a deeper understanding. Of, I don't know how far uh, people have their knowledge, but, but, but the youth are not Martin Luther King bred. They're more on the surface of Malcolm X. They're more on the surface of Dr. Collin. They're more on the sur surface of, of Louis Farrakhan. They're, they're, they're not Martin Luther King's children. They're not children of turning the other cheek, especially in Chicago. Do you see these kids in Chicago turning the other cheek? That's not what they do. <laughs> that's that's not what's happening. Oh, so when you teaching that, when you teaching that to them in the churches on Saturday, you know, and and they watching the, the the preachers, you know, preach the sermon on Saturday, but then smoke weed with them on Sunday, you know what I'm saying? You don't you don't effectively reach these kids. They want to be around and they want to hear things that are real to them, tangible to them. You understand what I'm saying? People that can really communicate with them because you've been there, not people that are gonna judge. Them. I used to have a co-host called Alderman Jones, and he said he knew Jeff Ford. And he asked Jeff Ford, he said, man, how did you get all these young people to follow you? 
You see, I do something their parents don't do. I give them attention. That's right. And listen, listen. Yeah. You say I give them attention. That's right. That's right. <laughs> and and by and let me ask you something. Um, by you know Joe Biden just passed a bill, right. a green bill, go 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 green bill, and these two brothers have the ability to have the have. These young brothers go back to school. Hey, man, we're going to learn what wind is all about. We're going to learn about solar power. And they could motivate people to go back to school and go back to trade school and to drop their guns. Would you agree with that? Well, I, I agree with it somewhat. But but I want to say this. You wouldn't have to do that if you didn't take those trade school opportunities out of school, period. See, yeah. when, when you was growing up, they had wood shop. They had electricity. They had auto shop. They have things that you can do with your hands. You, you understand me? Because, you know, with us, with, with, with young brothers like us, we have to be physical. We, we have to be physically active so that when we lay down at night, we go to sleep because we tired. You, you understand me? Physically tired. That's how you raise a young man, you know, that, that, that has that adrenaline flowing in him. He needs to be tired at night. You see, but these young boys ain't tired at night. They running around with, with they, they full of energy. They, 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 they frail, you, you know what I'm saying? A uh, 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 high, you know, so I, I don't want to get into that. But all I'm saying is, is okay. that you, 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 you took, you took, you took home economics out of school. You took wood shop and other works of the hands that brothers need. Things that are beneficial because everybody's not going to be a brain surgeon. Everybody's not going to be a mathematician. Some of us are going to build, you know, and you took that away. Some of us are going to be auto mechanics. You took that away. We need to bring it back. That's what we need. And I want to ask you something. It, and Jeff, I mean, what, 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 Jeff, what Supermax um, prison did you say they are and Where are they at? And how can we help Larry Hoover? In Jeff Ford. I'm glad. I'm glad you asked that. I'm glad. How can we support them? You know. I'm glad you. I'm glad you asked that. They, they're in. They're in Florence, Colorado, ADX, which uh, you, you might not know, but ADX is at administrative segregation. Okay. That's that's what that's that's ADX. Now, ADX is in the mountains and in the ground. Mm -hmm. So it's not like you can happenstance, you know, uh, stumble on this prison. You have to be looking for it. There's a road that goes, you know, uh, uh, you know, I, I can say this, that there's a road that you take, mm -hmm. uh, a very long road that goes out to this prison. And then when you go to the prison, you go down the road and then the road splits up into different places that you are going in the prison. It's, it's a community. It's a whole city. You know, you might be going north or you might be going south. This is all a road going inside the ADX, the administrative stage. It's a pathetic place. How you can how you can help them out? Well, I mean, if you don't know anything, you can help them out by being a responsible father. You can help them out by being a responsible, you know, a uh, uh, husband or if that's what you want to do, family man, whatever. You can help them out like that. But if you involve with community, then you know what to do. You know how to reach these men. You know, I'm not saying write them, but get involved with some of the things like my brother has a Free My Father campaign. And then we're doing this concert, and, and you already know that. And I wanted Where's to talk concert? about it. Where's the concert? The, the concert, yeah, the concert is on December 9th, and it's going to be a direct benefit to help Mr. Hoover. You know, our goal, again, is to let this man come home. This man has served his time. And he's definitely a critical, a political prisoner, and, and it's ridiculous. You know, I went to his, um, I went to his mother's funeral. Red Ross, you know, Red Ross. He invited me, and I was like, "Are you inviting me to go to Larry Hoover's mother funeral?" Yeah. You know, where was a home going? And I said, "Well, you know what? I went. And you know what? I was amazed at how many people from different affiliations." Different came Exactly. From different parts of the That's United right. States. And you know what I said to myself? This man has power and still has respect. Right. And he still controls a certain segment of these groups from right. within those walls. Right. Is, is that not true? Well, I want to say this, you know, he's, he think he's in he's not in control of anything. You know what that is, is those are the old individuals that used to be, you know, actively involved and they have a certain amount of respect. You understand me for him. 
uh, when he was actively involved. So that's a group thing. That's a group membership, kind of like you. You got to respect from some of the brothers that you used to be with, you know, when y'all grew up, some of the things that you've done, some of the things that y'all you all been involved with. But that doesn't necessarily mean that you have control to this day. You know, uh, one of the brothers that, that came around uh, was, was the vice lord, uh, a former vice lord, chief brother, Benny Lee, a good brother. All brothers of the struggle. You, you understand what I'm saying? So you, you can't say that he has any control of anything because he hasn't been in communication with anybody. He's not living that type of life. He's not given those type of commands. He's not on that, as the young folks say. He, he's not on that. So as you but you as you make this statement, he does not have that power, but he, he still has the power to influence, though, right? He has well, the power anybody, to influence. Anybody, 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 that's, in, anybody that's, that's situated in respect, like he is. He's situated as a man of respect. And anybody that's a man of respect, when they speak, you want to hear what they're saying. You understand me? Because they didn't get respect by, you know, not being intelligent. So he has to be intelligent. So when that man speaks, people are going to listen and people are going to, you know, some people are going to take his advice. But, you know, there are other things that we, we don't we just don't want to cast him in certain lights, like even the name of your show. When you say, uh, uh, should Jeff Ford and Larry Hoover you know, Chicago gang leaders, you know, this, uh, we don't really want, we don't, we don't want Mr. Hoover associated with, with anything, you know, close to gang and all that other type stuff, because a gang is a group of unorganized radicals. You understand me? What this, you know, what this was, what people didn't understand was it was an organization and it still is an organization, but it's not approved by the powers that be. So they say, Hey, it's a gang. And then since when did coming together, Group being grouped up, when did that become the game? The the, the little rascals, they weren't arrested. <laughs> they weren't indicted. <laughs> you don't see them in, indicting Spanky or Darla. You, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's not necessarily, you know, uh, uh, always a, a good or bad thing, but it's the, it's the powers that be, you understand me, that put a certain spin on certain things. So we want to get away from, you know, being uh, termed gang. 